Alexa just got off of a book tour. She wrote a book called uh, Financially Fearless, which I think you saw a copy of at the start of this. And in it, you talk about your 50, 20, 30 plan. So explain what that means. Um, so a few quick things. Um, as I described, you know, when you come to Learn Best, the number one financial question that people have is, what do I do with extra money? Even if it's $50 a week, or if it's $500 a month, or $5,000 a month. Um, so the first thing is helping people to just remember, we don't learn about personal finance in high schools, colleges, or graduate programs. So when you in your head are like, why do I feel like I, you know, I know a little bit, but like, why don't, why don't I feel like I get this completely? None of us learn about it. And the worst part is we turn to people like our parents or friends to ask them for advice, but they also haven't learned about it. So it's like the blind leading the blind sometimes, and it's really dangerous. Um, so we... In the 50, 20, 30 rule, it's a financial planning principle. I didn't make, up, make it up. It's really straightforward. But it gives you a good sense of are you living within your means. And here's how it works. And when we make a financial plan for you at LearnVest, we've even simplified it further. We give you one number, and that's your spend it on anything in the world that you want number. And we've found behaviorally it's the best thing that keeps people on track for their budget. Um, so we could take a household and say, you guys get... $500 a week, go crazy. Um, and that's the best way to do it. But that stems from the 50, 20, 30, which is, I'm just going to use basic math. Let's say my household sitting here right now makes $10,000 after taxes. So that's the cash that hits our bank accounts. So 50% or less should go to essentials. That's the roof over your head. That's your transportation to and from work. So in New York, it's the you know MTA and it's your, your taxis. If you live in the, the burbs, it's your car, it's your car insurance, and it's everything that goes into that car, so things like your gas, et cetera. Um, number three, it's your groceries, because you have to eat to live, and in fact, you could eat groceries for every meal. Um, and then finally, it's your utility bill. So that's what's essential to keep the roof over your head, and it should be 50% or less of your household income. Um, the other reason that we want it to be 50% or less of your household income, especially if you're married, is if one of you loses your job, you can still maintain basic life. 20%, so after the 50, 20% or more should go to the future. Um, and there's a graph in the book that I came up with. It's like not rocket science, but it basically shows you this. You start working at 25, let's say you retire at 65, and you live till 95. So you work for 40 years to fund 70. <laughs> so if you are not saving at least 20% or more for the future, basic math here, you only work for half your life, you have to save a lot for the future. And that's the big thing. Or you have to work longer. Or you have to work longer, <laughs> which lots of people think but what if something happens? What if, you, what if you are a nurse and you have a hip replacement and you can't stand up any longer? Or what if you start to get dementia, like one of my grandparents, and you just can't keep doing the job? Um, you just don't know, and so let's not bank on, on hoping. That's just not a financial plan. And then the final piece is 30%, and that's the lifestyle. That's all the fun stuff. That's your gym membership to Equinox. That's your soul cycle classes. That's, that's the weddings that we all get invited to. That's the shopping. That's the dog that you take care of. And 50, 20, 30, and the biggest thing of that, of that whole 10, uh, $10,000 is 30 to 35% or less should be your rent or if you own a home, your mortgage. And lots of people are like, but it's New York and... And one of the things that we tell people is that's a quick litmus test for the rest of your life. And I have this amazing mentor um, that uh, Susan's met. She, early partner Goldman Sachs, she was like, one trick to life is always live beneath your, your means in your home. But counterintuitively, we always are like, but it's my home. You're never there. And in general. In New York City, you're never yeah, there. Yeah. And in general, um, people always justify buying these homes they're going to hopefully grow into. And I had to give the New York Times advice on the, for the real estate column this morning on someone who, there they were, and they purchased a home that was slightly a reach, and they were on a freelance budget, and the next year their freelance budget went away, and within a year they were uh, foreclosed on their house. And you're like, that's why you don't want to reach. You, you want to make sure you're not. So 50, 20, 30, and what I believe in um, as a CFP and as the CEO of LearnVest is, straightforward, simple advice, because you don't have the brain bandwidth to, to, to be completely burdened with all of these different things. So we, we like to come up with the tricks that you're going to remember that you're going you're gonna to actually execute on um, so that you can make sure that you don't worry about your finances.